the four need to average 357-27 to break that record of 15-49-08 set by Ireland in 1985. It is a backloaded setup for Oregon with Hawker on quite a hot streak here. He's going to get it at about 8.02, 8.01.50 after a 4.01 split. He'll give it off now to Cooper Tier. Let's watch this clock. 15.49.08 is the record time to beat. The record survives, but it's a heck of an effort. 15.52.05. Tier goes 3.53.24 on the final lap. And we have for you four more ex-Duck All-Stars, all experienced runners, all capable of running a 357 mile, but can four of them do it at once? That's the conundrum when you try to break a record like this. And I'll tell you, last year, I thought it was going to happen. You know, I think Cooper Tier, he's going to knock this down, but there was just a little too much to make up. And that 15.52.05 was pretty brilliant stuff. But the number we're shooting at tonight, 15.49.08. And what a group. Matt Centrowitz, Charlie Hunter, Sam Prakel, Johnny Gregoric, Post Collegiates. They all race a lot. They're in great shape. They're all capable. Phenomenal team. You know, again, you, if you were to add all of these personal bests together, you'd have 349, 350, 350. 353 so those the numbers are there and like you said Bob you just have to figure out how to put it together and you see on your screen Eric Sawinski the man is a workhorse that will be your pacer he once again paid to be here he's making a living out of doing this thing but he sure is racking up the travel miles and the international uh, travel rewards because he's just all over the place but you see right next to him the man of the hour that is Matthew Centrowitz the, the accolades are beyond counting. The number of U.S. U.S. titles, I believe, seven. He's a 2011 NCAA champion. He world silver, world bronze, world indoor champion, and Olympic champion in Rio. So we're off and running. So Winsky taking it out. So if we're running, shooting for 349.08, ultimately everybody's got to run that about a 357 and some change to get under that and maybe 356. So I expect that we're probably going to be taking it out in about 57. If we get to that first 400 meters in about 57, that should be about what Sawinski is shooting for. And you see right behind Sawinski, that is Kieran Lum of OTC Plus One. And Central, Clever name. <laughs> and Central working right along with them. That group, by the way, so it's Kieran Lum, Matt Wisner, Jackson Messler, and Adrian Tucker. And they will pull the X Ducks along and then your run club has two groups out there as well because, hey, you could say you were on the track when this happened. And Kieran Lum just signing that contract with On Running, making big moves in the running world these days with lots of wins. Helen O'Beary of On Running just winning the Boston Marathon. But a uh, an All-American and one of the best milers of all time from the University of Washington. So a bit of an irony coming down here to Eugene and running with the OTC Plus One team to help this four-by-mile make it to that 1549 mark. Central looking smooth as usual. You know, I think that one of the things we've always noticed about Matthew Centrowitz is his ability to just run under control. See Sawinski work looking at the big board as well as his watch. And point of note, too, if you're watching this at home, you're like, oh, it looked like they came through the 800 there in 202 or 204 even. That's not the mark. They, to run a four by a mile, they had to start pretty far back on the home stretch. So you're really are taking about a about a two-step progression forward for every quarter mile they're running rather than 400 meters. So after 16 of those laps is when you're looking to achieve that finish line. So if that made any sense, <laughs> I hope it did. It's late for us too. 
So Sawinski's work is done. And now it's OTC plus one doing the work. So oftentimes they will put a cone down at the theoretical quarter mile mark. Every quarter mile mark, they just move it forward. They see that cone right back there. That was actually the cone was it. for the three quarter mile mark, exactly where they want it to be for his splits, because it's really tough to run out there without those splits being given. You got to be able to see it. You saw a little grimace on Centrowitz's face. This may not be as comfortable as he thought it would be at this pace. We'll see how he does down the backstretch while Lom is actually in prime condition, having had an awesome indoor season already and deciding to go pro and sign a contract on running. But can Centro lead this team off and put him in a position to potentially run away with a new world's best in the four or five mile? Now well, here we come for mile one. Again, watch the cone. That's the split. And you'll see the hand. Yeah, that's the, the well. hand up right there. You see that? So that's the hand up. That's 401. 4156. And it looked like the next up for that X Duck All Stars is going to be Charlie Hunter. Now runs for the Union Athletics Club. Hunter, an Australian Olympian, also NCAA Indoor 800 meter champion, while a University of Oregon Duck. Trains up in Portland under tutelage of Pete Julian, the Nike Union Athletics Club, and Hunter, a 353 miler. That's Matt Wisner. Wisner's son of one of those more unheralded ducks that seem to come through at a time when the Cole Hawkers and Cooper Tears of the world were getting all the headlines, but he was still a sub four minute miler among that crew. So imagine just like the Washington Huskies squad of today, there was an Oregon squad of yesterday <laughs> that essentially had such a depth to it. You could be a sub four miler and not be in the top four or five on your squad. And Hunter, one of those guys, a great replay filler, a relay filler. So start of this leg, four seconds off pace. We'll see what Hunter can bring back. Again, Charlie Hunter now, then Sam Prego, then Johnny Gregoric. You know what I like about this group? Now, Hunter's the younger guy, but Preko, Gregoric, Centro, these are guys who are aging well. You know, doing the Husky meets the last few years. I mean, Preko and Gregoric get up into uh, the indoor meets in Seattle every chance they get, keep it fresh. See a clock in the background ticking off 635, 36. They have about 600 meters to go from this point before they hand off again. They're shooting for that eight minute mark. So they're, they are a little bit off. Right now they're, they'd be running a shade over 16 minutes on pace or maybe 1604. Again, that record 1549. So, so far, not quite being set up for a record attempt, but yet again, you know, just another sweet opportunity to see some phenomenal athletes all running roughly four minute miles with a baton in their hand. And don't be mistaken, running with a baton changes things. It just does, it feels different. And here goes Hunter deciding he's gonna try to do something now over this final lap. How fit is he? We'll have to see. Hunter under the back stretch. End of the second mile coming here. The 
Wisner not giving up here, Bob. Wisner saying, wait a minute, you think you, I think you went a little bit early. He's coming back at this. OTC plus one, perhaps giving the X-Duck All-Stars a bit of a run for their money. Hey, it can't hurt having someone to race with. And here he comes, Hunter again. And the familiar headband of Jackson Metzler. A great career at the University of Oregon. A Pac-12 steeplechase champion. And there was an exciting moment. There was a one-off meet right before the Olympic trials at the very last cutoff for qualifying for the Olympic trials in 2021. And he ran, they set up a meet just for him and he got the standard to qualify for the trials in front of his parents his teammates, his family, friends. It was actually quite a, a fun experience to see him get that and take it down. And he always loves to run with his headband. That's just really easy to tell from far away. But Metzler, a Eugene native, like his mom ran at U of O. There, there's just a lot of uh, a lot of heritage there and has done amazing things in the city of Eugene. Yeah, I got to see the mom and the dad both run their careers. So Johnny Gregoric for the ex-Duck All-Stars. He spent a couple years at Oregon after transferring from, I want to say, Georgetown. But uh, Gregoric looking pretty good there. Gregoric, is, he's a 349 miler. He had a phenomenal race a few years back in Boston, which were both he and Sam Prakel, who's on this squad, just absolutely ran amazing when uh, Yomif Kajelcha was going after the indoor world record. He just towed those guys along. Gregoric running a 349, making him one of the absolute best indoor milers of all time on the global stage. He's in the top 10. So halfway through, this group's about nine seconds off pace, not insurmountable with Gregoric and Prakel still to finish. Gregoric putting his head down. He's got a little bit of work to do, and he knows it, so he's going to get after it the best he can. Metzler fading back a little bit. You know, he's not a miler, but he's doing his best out there and trying to run at that sub-four-minute level. Gregoric knows what it feels like, and so he's getting after it, and he's going to take it to the baton exchange with Sam Prakel to bring it on home. Oh, final lap to go. I here we go. I'm miscounting laps already, Bob. What a what a night it's been. <laughs> miscounting laps for Gregoric as he's on his way home here down the back stretch. He's got 300 meters to go, but he really put it down there. So he's going to have probably about a last 700 meters of a pretty incredible split where he is a little bit more conservative at the outset. And here he goes. He's flying down the back stretch. Well, for record pace, he should be finishing up this leg at 11.52. I fear he'll be about 10 seconds over that. So then the question becomes, can Prankel get out there in tempo at 3.50? I'm not sure. I don't want to say ne never say never, but it's going to be a tall order to see if they can even get under the 16 minute mark. The Prakel's had an incredible indoor season thus far. There's the handoff from the OTC plus one. But Prakel. So a 359.46. So Gregoric made up one second of uh, what is uh, off the record, but now a lot of work. 
for Prego, or I should say Gregoric made up, now Prego. Did he make up eight seconds? So he'd have to run a, yeah, 350, 351. I think the the handoff was, according to the clock, that was there near the finish line, I think it was about at 12.04 or something like that. So I just, uh, I'm not sure. So yeah, that's sure. eight off the pace. So they were nine off. So Johnny did what he could to get some back. And now it's up to Sam Prakel to be a miracle worker to set the mark. But you know, I think this is a good exercise now. Two years in a row, two good groups put together. And going after a very notable mark. I think this will so be a tradition. Out here. I think if we break it here, we'll keep trying to break it year after year. Sam Pregel is definitely making up ground. He he was at 600 meters in. He had already cut that mar cut that deficit down by about two seconds. So he's running definitively sub four minute mile pace. Just how far under four can Sam Pregel run today to try to ratchet this down? You see, like four, he's got 800 meters to go at 14:04. 800 to go at 1404. Can he run a 156 or 155 just to crack 16? Is in reality, the 16 minute barrier has actually only been broken three times in history. So even if the record isn't smashed today, there's still some history to be made. Come down the home stretch here, Bob. This will be the final lap. You see the clock ticking by, 15.06. So that actually last lap right there was a painful one for Prakel. He's really going to have to throw down here, which I know is incredibly difficult when you don't have anybody to chase. But Prakel doing what he can in the spotlight here, back in his old stomping grounds of Eugene, Oregon, to try to help his team to a sub-16 minute four by mile. Yeah, to get to the record, it would take a 43-second lap. It's just maybe Sub one guy. within reach. Gonna be close. <laughs> uh, just coming into the home stretch now. They're gonna be probably about a 16.07, 16.08. So a great effort for this team. Prakel really throwing down to the final home stretch here, going to the arms, swinging that baton, using it for everything he can in about 16.08 for the squad. And a great effort. Not what they were looking for, but you know, when you put big, hairy, audacious goals out there, they don't always go down. That's why records are made. They're made to be broken, but they're also meant to be revered. 16.07.83 is the mark. OTC plus one, rather nice 16.34.30. UO Run Club yellow, UO Run Club green still to finish. Here they come. So both U of O yellows beat the greens between the women's and the men's relays. There's our Iron Man pacer.
1807-17 for your Run Club Yellow. All right, let's hear from the 